Hey everyone, Happy New Year. Happy New Decade. I want to kick off 2020 by first thanking all of you who make this channel possible. I started making videos just five months ago, and I never expected them to be so well received. I'm grateful to all of you who watch, comment, and who've subscribed to the channel, and I hope that you continue to tell me what you'd like to learn so that I can make content that helps you. Now, one of my most popular recent videos is about Metal LB. In that video, which is up here in a card and which I'll link to at the end, I used Trefic as the ingress controller. I set it up behind Metal LB and I had it request a service of type load balancer. Metal LB was like, sure dude, and we were all set. Two people asked if the same thing would work with the Nginx ingress controller and specifically with Rancher. The short answer, yes. The long answer is, well, yes, but maybe I can just say it more slowly. Yes. So let's roll that intro and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, the first thing that you need to do is disable the default Nginx ingress controller that Rancher installs for you. This is deployed as a daemon set with host network set to true, and that means that it will run on every host in your cluster and it will listen on ports 80 and 443. When you deploy the cluster, or if you edit an already deployed cluster, you'll find a setting under advanced options to disable the ingress controller. Set that, and then launch the new cluster, or save the existing one. In my case, I'm launching a new cluster, so we have to wait a while while it spins up. But don't worry, I'll speed it up. But first, I want to tell you about something new that I'm doing for you. First of all, let me just get a progress bar up here so that I don't take too long talking. The first thing is that I'm going to start producing content in 4K. For some of you, that probably doesn't matter, but for others, I hope you just cheered and clapped your hands. If you don't have a 4K TV or monitor, YouTube will downscale it to 1080p or 720p or whatever it is that you're watching, but the general consensus among the creator community is that the quality of 1080p is better when YouTube downscales it than if I upload in 1080p and let them stream it. I'm not sure why that is, but I want you to have the best quality videos that I can give you. Now, if you do watch in 4K, then you'll get the crispiest, crunchiest video right out of the gate. Next, I have a present for those of you who like to follow along with my videos. I know that these are tutorials, and they're often sped up because no one really wants to watch 10 minutes of text scrolling by on the screen. Many of you asked me to send you the resources that I use in the videos, so things like configuration files, Kubernetes manifests, and so on. So for all of you, I've created a public Git repository that will have all of the content sorted by video. For example, in the folder for this video, you'll find everything that you need to deploy Metal LB, the Nginx ingress controller, and the demo application. So that link is here, and I'll also put it in the video description. I'll go back through the archives and add content for previous videos, but if you don't see something in the repo, just open an issue and let me know. I have some other things planned, but I find that talking about plans drains energy from actually doing the thing. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and watch my future videos so that you don't miss out on the announcements. Okay, this looks like it's about to wrap up the install, so let's get back to it. I'll grab the kubectl config file for the new cluster, save it, and set the kubeconfig variable to point at it. Whenever I do this, I like to run kubectl get nodes to make sure that I'm pointed at the right cluster. I knew a Buddhist monk who once told me that we make a rule because we learn a lesson. You can probably imagine the lesson that I learned by firing off kubectl commands at the wrong cluster. I'm not going to tell you that story. The next step is to install Metal LB. The rise in popularity for this project has been really good to them, and they've updated their documentation to point out a few things. First, this is a beta level project. It will probably work, but it hasn't been fully vetted to determine just how well it will work under load. For the type of load that I'm going to put on it, I trust it, but make sure that you run load tests against it before you put any sort of real load on it for your environment. They also fixed the config map naming issue that I raised in the last video. Thanks, guys. They also added instructions for customize, and I really appreciate that. If you've never used customize, it lets you template Kubernetes manifests with automatic patching for different environments and a whole mess of configuration management coolness. The problem, though, is that if you've never used customize, the way that they have the instructions written makes them into something that you can't just copy and paste. Now, that's not their fault. Customize is unique to every environment, and as you'll see in a moment, even the customized templates for the Nginx ingress controller need local modification. So this is actually what led me to create the Git repo for the channel. 
I've taken the templates from both projects, and I created customized templates that you can copy and paste. And that's what we need for a video that's showing you how to do something, right? The Metal LB config map isn't sophisticated enough to need a config map generator, so we'll take their sample, create the local config map, and then we'll just use that. Both Metal LB and Nginx are declaring a remote resource. That's a remote Git location that contains another customized file that will be imported and executed. This only works if you use customize build and then pipe that to kubectl. It does not work with kubectl-k. So after we run that, Metal LB is up and running. You can see in my local config map that I'm using the layer two format and I've given it a small block of addresses on my local network. If you didn't update this before running the install, that's okay. Just change it now and run the install command again. Metal LB will update and it'll start using the new addresses. And that's the power of customize. Now let's head over to the Nginx directory. We'll use customize again, but I've added some changes to the default Nginx customization file. They have install files for all sorts of environments, and what we're working in is effectively bare metal. Their bare metal config imports the generic cloud provider config and then deploys a service of type node port. That makes sense if you're going to use an external load balancer. We're not doing that, so I had to change it to be a load balancer service. Nginx looks like they're still figuring out how to use customize because their instructions have a mandatory prerequisite that installs almost everything needed to run the ingress controller, like the cluster role, service account, cluster role binding, and the workloads. This is like a generic install. And then when you run the customization file for your specific environment, it overwrites the things that need to be changed and turns it into your own setup. That's fine, but there were three things that don't get changed. The config maps for TCP services, UDP services, and additional Nginx configuration directives. If you were to change those in the cluster, outside of the customization, and then you ran customize later, you'd clobber the changes that you made. To keep from doing that, I also added empty files for those three config maps. Now, if you need to punch through some TCP services or something, you can make the change here and rerun the install. This puts you square in the camp of keeping things declarative and not making any changes directly to the cluster. That's the point of using something like Customize. It's a proper configuration management framework for Kubernetes. When we look at the service for the ingress controller, we see that it's a service of type load balancer and it has one of the IPs from our Metal LB config. The external traffic policy is set to cluster, which is what we want for our scenario. There are two options that you can use here, local and cluster. Local will serve content from pods that are on the actual host where the request landed. This eliminates any latency from cross-host communication and it might be good when you know that you have pods on every host and that you also have a listener on every host. We don't have that when we use Metal LB, so we need to set it to cluster. That tells Kubernetes to do cross-host routing and find a pod for the service and then serve the traffic from that pod. We're only running a single Kubernetes node, and we only have one replica in our ingress controller deployment. If we needed to scale that, we can just add more replicas, but we'd also need to make sure that they didn't start stacking up on a single host. A better solution would be to redeploy the ingress controller as a daemon set, just like how it would be done if we had deployed it from Rancher. Okay, we could stop here, but I like to show you that things actually work. So to do that, let's change over to the demo directory and kick that off. This is my standard Rancher demo application, and it consists of an ingress, a cluster IP service, and a deployment. When we run this, the ingress will be served by the ingress controller on the IP that we saw earlier. I've added that to Etsy hosts on my computer, and if we go there, we get three replicas that show our default happy blue cows. I could have just as easily deployed this without an ingress using a service of type load balancer, and Metal LB would have assigned it the next IP in the pool. It's as easy as that. Everything that you need to do this yourself is in the Git repo, and nothing here actually requires Rancher. If you're interested in using Metal LB with the Nginx ingress controller, then this tutorial will work for you. Thank you again to all of you who've subscribed since the last video. I'd like to also thank the two viewers who requested this subject. If there's any questions that you have, you can post them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to put together a video that helps you out. Remember that these are your videos. You tell me what you want to see. I'm Adrian Goins, and I'll see you in the next video.